This is the moment that we can, if we choose, overcome fear and step forward with courage to be very frank about that which we are challenged with as a society. This is intended only to be a start. How is it that we're going to smash the status quo? The notion of how long it's taken. You know, as, as I get a little older, I'll be 45 soon. But is there any, re any reason that we need to accept the slow rate and pace of the change that we've experienced that our people have been fighting for? Is this not the moment in history when our collective society stands up and says, no, we can absolutely do much better? That we can recognize our mutual humanity? I listen to and always uh, appreciate the stories of our elders, the men and women who've been in part of the struggle for so long. And yet here in turn, they're looking to the young people. They're saying, we need for you to step forward and lift up our nations. We need to reach out to our brothers and sisters for whom we're having a similar struggle here. And I want to thank everyone who has agreed to participate, to volunteer their time, to bring their, the essence of their spirit and their heart. Let's have a, a conversation, but a new conversation that actually results in some significant change. That the way it was described over there, John, that it's been put away, it's been put away over in the drawer, that we need to bring that back out and we need to put it fully in the center that where we began, that we don't ignore the realities, including of participation at the start of dialogues, that we get it right going forward, and that we take to heart seriously those, and we act on, on, on that encouragement that we, that we receive, that we reach out to the academic sector and we are, be challenged as academic sectors should be challenged. That's the place, that's the place you know, to, I think, give root to the challenging of the status quo that we're experiencing right now. That we also, in our language, we examine how it is that it might feel like an attack or how, how it might give rise to a sense of partisanship. And then we, we take that with respect to the notion of, lang of, of the language of relationships between those of us who are all related to one another. The ancestors had this very beautiful vision, the, 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 the handshake of friendship in the treaty making that was about a true relationship. And it feels like, as I reflect I've only been in this role for two years, but I was all often so struck by the narrow confines of a conversation that there would be with a, with, a, with a former minister of Indian Affairs. And the need for a new conversation that, that puts it aside and starts afresh, that kickstarts something better than what we have now, that isn't about one dominating over the other, that's about there being equal space. That's the original treaty concept that the ancestors our collective ancestors. It wasn't just indigenous peoples engaged in that treaty discussion, in that treaty ceremony, in that treaty handshake. There was somebody else there too. And whether Canadians have been here for a singular generation or newly arrived or have been here for 10 or more generations, as John has also said through his work, there's been a missing conversation between indigenous peoples and the immigrant society in Canada. And so I think this was really in many ways that notion of can we be innovative? Can we take a risk? Can we say that we can and must smash through this status quo? And how do we get going? Where is the place that we start? I really feel strongly about the, uh, the artists' communities, as you said, Carl, at the outset, leading the way. There is no way in our own cultures, whether you're Nishnabe, I would suspect, for us as Nuchonal, that you could ever you could ever contemplate moving forward in life without not just the support, but the leadership of the artist as we would describe them in English community. There is no way that we would contemplate that. The act of, of governing would include the spiritual instruction of the elders. It would include going to the aunties and the grandmothers, the matriarchs, to make sure that you're on the right track. And it would include seeking out the leadership of the artist's community. And so while perhaps this is a, a clumsy start, as people, uh, we can be clumsy, we can make mistakes. I think the intention here is can we create a new space in this country where we invite Canadians to see the, the mutual humanity, that we are indeed all related. That what's happening right now, and I'll join those young people who are walking from Shoal Lake number 39 reserve to Winnipeg. They're doing that walk for water. And it's the young people who are stepping forward, recognizing, as you did, uh, Dr. Axworthy, the, the, uh, those who have been displaced from the flooding in their homelands, 
sometimes not one, two, maybe three times dispossessed over the course of history, and then ending up being dispossessed and then brought into a, into a, a city setting far away from home, only to have the flurry of the, uh, and be challenged by the notion that, that you raised with the, um, with the Air Canada employees and not being uh, supported to stay in, in, the, um, in the same ho hotel setting. It's like there's still an other. And so is there an opportunity that we go back to that, return back to that handshake, that we recognize the mutual humanity in one another? This, this was just the seed of a concept that, that we somehow wanted to just get going. And how do we do that? Is this something that you feel those amongst us here is possible? Is this the moment in history when we accomplish something? We've talked about the legal aspect. Even as we speak, the Halkamina are off in the Organization of American States Inter-American Commission, and they're challenging Canada's positions on negotiation. They're saying that notion of not allowing private property to be off the table is now being, that, that argument is now being accepted in the international courts. Sagage Henderson, we've had over 40 court cases that have been won. And so is that the path that we have to keep going now? Or can we do what it is that the ancestors left us with, and that is the ability to reason with one another, the ability for us to really truly recognize one another, and to embrace the notion that it is not acceptable in any way, shape, or form that there would be over 500 murdered and missing Aboriginal women from coast to coast to coast, that people would be dispossessed of their territories because of the flooding and end up downtown here in Winnipeg that none of this is acceptable, that the original treaty handshake envisioned a time when all of our young people would be supported in education. And so I want to thank all of you here in the university. I want to thank Carla for helping to finish with this story. My late grandmother, dad's late mom, she had this to say, and I would say it in conclusion, given that we're, at, we're, at a, we're in a university, and this is a com about a conversation so that we can support each other uh, in our learning efforts. She said, she said, grandson, I raised 17 kids. I myself was a fighter all my life. I raised my kids all to be fighters. We fight our fights with our fists no longer. We must fight our fight with education. That's the legacy that the matriarch of our family left for us. It, it, it suggests that the struggle has been a long and a difficult one. I always go back to Dad's words because they drive me nuts. They apply just as accurately in Algebra 11 as they do with this. There is no easy way. There is either the hard way or the harder way. The hard way requires the difficult work of discussions like this. Let us choose at this moment in history, as Indigenous peoples and as Canadians alike, let's go there. Let's go to those difficult dis discussions and more than that, let's get on with the tough work of transforming the relationship. Let's make sure that future generations will look back and say they knew that something different needed to happen and they chose to do something about it at this time in history. Thank you so much, all of you, for taking the time here today to all those who've joined us in the panel.